Hi Booktube, it's Nikki here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to bring you my October wrap up part two. I will link below um, October wrap up part one um, if you are interested in seeing what I read in the first part. Um, of course, the first thing I'm going to start with is Victober. Um, in the first part, I talked about how I'd listened to Jane Eyre, and I also mentioned that I had started a buddy read of The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. Now, I buddy read this with um, the wonderful Alice from Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Um, please go and check out her channel. I'll link it down below. Just absolutely love her channel, um, her content. The only trouble is I always get so many recommendations after watching her channel. <laughs> Um, that's the only drawback. But yeah, we had a great time buddy reading this. We, um, it was my school holiday, so we were able to read four chapters a day and we checked in with each other on alternate days. And the buddy reading experience was um, fantastic and will always um, hold a special um, part in my heart now, actually, the memory of this buddy read um, and doing this with Alice. Um, and every time Victober rolls around, I shall always remember this one because this is um, a really special book, I would say. This is about Helen Graham, who arrives at the beginning of the story um, at the dilapidated, quite rundown um, Wildfell Hall. She arrives mysteriously with a young child, a boy. Now, so it appears that she's a single parent. And in the first 12 chapters, we are getting Gilbert Markham's perspective. Now, he is one of the villagers because this arrival of Helen Graham has caused quite a stir in the village. They all want to know who exactly she is, um, what her past is and what the story is. Gilbert is the one who probably gets the closest to her in this time. But these 12, round 12 chapters at the beginning are his letters actually to a friend um, giving this account of getting to know Mrs. Graham. And then we switch, we switch perspective. When Mrs. Graham gives Gilbert her diary and allows him to read her account of all of the past up to why she's at the um, Wildfell Hall. So very interestingly, we, we switch perspective. And then we get towards the end of the book where we switch back again to Gilbert's um, perspective. Now, this covers some very um, heavy topics. There is physical abuse, there is emotional abuse in, um, in this story. So um, please don't go into it thinking that you're going to get this lovely um, romantic, you know, this love story. Um, it's really quite hard hitting, but it's so well done. Alice and I could not predict. We were making predictions all the time about what was going to happen and how the pieces fitted together, but we couldn't predict it all, um, what was happening. Um, I would just say there's a video that I would um, recommend that you go over and watch. Ross um, at Skelly Dandling are out the books. Her daughter Tilly from Tilly's Shelf has just in the past week uploaded a video called, let me get this right, Morality and Abuse in the Tenant of Wildfell Hall. So she actually explains brilliantly in 15 minutes all the different um, themes of this book and relates it to how it could, how it could be relevant today. For example, the domestic abuse, um, of course, the context is different now um, in terms of the historical setting and now, but actually the um, what could happen in a domestic setting is really quite similar to what could happen in um, a modern day. Um, I'm trying I'm trying here not to actually give too much away, <laughs> which is quite hard as I'm giving um, my summary. Interestingly, Anne Bronte received quite a bit of criticism for this book at the time. It seems to have been quite a forerunner for feminism, as in women making a stand and trying to get out of a situation that they were in. Um, her, her sister Charlotte, by all accounts, also tried to stop the publication of this book. She apparently thought it was too radical um, for this time. And Alice also found another bit of interesting information that the their brother, Anne and Charlotte's, um, and Emily's brother, he um, also finds himself 
in a similar situation and behaving in a similar way to one of the characters in this book. And they, she was almost feeling compelled, Anne, to write this as a warning to what can happen when you live your life so frivolously. Because there are several characters in this book who are quite despicable and behave in a very unprincipled um, manner. So yeah, I, I don't want to say any more because Alice and I, we didn't know anything about this book at all. And it was almost the best way, other than that I would thoroughly recommend um, reading this book. It's, um, I'd say it's very different to Jane Eyre, but has some fantastic themes. And I would really recommend buddy reading it because you can really explore um, those hard hitting themes um, together. So yeah, five stars um, all the way. Now, what else did I read for Victober? Um, for the Fall Into Reading Challenge, which I've talked about, on the bingo board, it says to read a graphic novel. Um, I don't read many graphic novels, but in my school library, I discovered this, which was Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. And it's got amazing, um, I'm not sure if you can see that, amazing graphics in here. It's really, really good and got enough text that you can actually follow the story really, really well. So yeah, would really, really enjoy this one. Um, five stars as well. Now, I mentioned in my first half um, of October wrap up that um, that I'd listened to Jane Eyre, 18 hours of it. And um, and I had started Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. But um, I was only eight chapters in when we started our buddy read of The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. And I just felt I couldn't have them both going simultaneously. Um, I, I just thought they were going to cross over too much in my mind. So I parked Wives and Daughters. Um, but instead... I and I will come back to it. I will definitely come back to Wives and Daughters at some point, but I hadn't realised at the time that it was so long. <laughs> it's about 670 pages, so I was reading it on Kindle. Um, but what I did do was get the DVD from the library. And I know this is not the normal way of doing things, but actually it is a bit of a top tip. I'd give people who are struggling with classics, and if you don't read many classics, sometimes it's really good to actually watch an adaptation first. And then it can actually help you with um, with reading the book, which I know is not the normal way of doing things. But um, I actually watched the Wives and Daughters miniseries um, with Francesca Annis um, as playing the mother. And I, it was fantastic. I loved it. I really, really loved it. And um, so then I can't wait to actually get on to reading Wives and Daughters, which will probably realistically now be in 2022. But yeah, love that adaptation. Would highly recommend that one. So what else was I reading? So in the first half, I also mentioned that I was doing a buddy read of The Railway Man by Eric Lomax. I ended up giving this one four stars. This is a non-fiction memoir. Eric Lomax is Scottish. He grew up in quite a strict um, upbringing with, as an only child. And as a young lad, he signs up and finds himself heading over as a soldier to Singapore. Um, Singapore then is taken over by the Japanese occupied and they mention in here places like Fort Canning where um, I visited as well and so for me this was really well special in the sense of I could picture the places and have actually been to some of the buildings that he talks about in here. He, this group of soldiers are then sent to help to build the Burma Railway which is very ironic because Eric as a young lad was obsessed with railways and he was that little lad who was would be found at the railway stations um making notes about all the steam engines and steam trains little did he know that he would be having such a sinister link with um that means of transport later in his life so we follow him being tortured um by the japanese and it is um as i said in the first half of october it is incredibly brutal it is very very hard hitting um i buddy read this with a subscriber sonia and um as we messaged we were both struggling at times with what we were reading um and it really does make you wince it makes you ashamed at times that humans can treat each other in this way um but Interestingly, one part in this, he's working in a part here in Singapore and it is absolutely horrendous conditions. But he's 
He's clever in the way that he feigns being unwell to get himself sent to um, Changi Hospital, which is actually now where we have the airport here in Singapore. And there, on a scale, those conditions were way, way better. So he manages to get himself there. It is incredibly emotional. And what a strength of character that this man is. And he actually goes on to live into his 90s, which is incredible. And I would thoroughly recommend reading it. It's not easy though. And thoroughly recommend re um, watching, sorry, the film with Colin Firth and Nicole Kidman. I've watched it twice now and think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, although it, the storyline is slightly different, I would say, in terms of his personal life. But yeah, um, thoroughly recommend. Now, another book I mentioned in the first half, um, and I have now finished, is The Winter Sea by Susanna Kearsley. Um, this was a buddy read with Becca from Hicks Picks Books and a subscriber, Debbie. Um, this was my first Susanna Kearsley, so I was very excited. And we had a fantastic um, experience reading this book. For me, this was five stars. It's the beginning of a trilogy. And actually, Susanna Kearsley's new book is apparently the prequel um, to this. This, um, first of all, I say her writing is so readable. You are drawn in really, really quickly, and I, um, and I, and I loved it. We have two timelines. We have the current one um, with Carrie, who's a writer. And what I would say is what is really fascinating is we see her writing process. She is writing a novel, um, a historical novel. And as she's doing all her research in the Scottish Highlands, we see her writing process and we did wonder when we were talking about it whether this is actually Susanna Kearsley's writing process that we're actually getting an insight into here. I don't know. Um, but she is doing this research. What's interesting about it is that she keeps getting these um, really deep intuitions of what characters in her book what they did or where they stayed or what they're called and then actually when she researches it she finds that she was completely right so she has this strange link with the past which we will discover is very much actually linked to her ancestral line so then we get this historical timeline which is when is um in the 18th century and was following sophia and she it's all about the um, Jacobite fleet and how they are trying to bring the um, the king back to Scotland and to take his rightful throne. Um, she lives, Sophia lives with the Countess, who's an incredible character, a really, really strong. And she's involved in all the plans which are going on. And we have this parallel love story of Carrie in the current day and Sophia in the historical um, timeline. So we actually switch a lot backwards and forwards. In fact, every chapter tends to go current and historical, current and historical with each chapter. There is one long chapter where there are multiple historical elements, but otherwise um, it does switch backwards and forwards. So yeah, would thoroughly recommend, really, really love it. And we hope to buddy read the second one in 2022. So five stars. Now, the next book I finished after that was Portrait in Sepia by Isabel Allende. Now, last month I talked about um, Daughter of Fortune, which is the first in the trilogy, and this is the second. Um, actually, with these, you could read them as standalones. You get enough backstory that you could just read this one on itself. You wouldn't necessarily have to have read that first one. In the first book, we followed Eliza um, and her story. In this one, we follow Aurora. Aurora is the granddaughter of um, Eliza. Eliza is the maternal grandmother of um, Aurora. But in actual fact, the first half of this book is all Aurora's, um, um, her backstory, if you like, in terms of all her parents. And I say all her parents because there, there is one who is her real father and one who's of her named father. Um, so we get their story. We get all her grandparents' stories, in, in, um, including Eliza. And so it's wonderful. It's very much Isabel Allende's style, I presume, having this being her second book that I've read. We get fantastic historical details. And this is set in um, 19th century Chile. 
and this is, um, I should say also it's translated from the Spanish, but we get these wonderful historical details, which I presume are really detailed and fascinating about what's going on politically um, or any unrest um, at that time. We, I love all, because I'm very character, I love all the characters, we do get all these little pockets of stories, as I say, so we'll get like the grandfather's story and then we'll get like the aunt's story and then the cousin's story and we're getting all these people's little story as we're like leading into Aurora's story. Second half is very much her story, how she grew up, who was looking after her and um, her coming of age, becoming a woman, her fascination with photography, her romances, her failed romances and who she is um, as a person. So yeah, um, again, really enjoyed it four stars and we'll definitely be finishing the trilogy probably now in 2022. And finally, I couldn't resist. So many people on booktube have been talking about Agatha Christie recently that I was really in the mood and I was going to wait till November but I just thought no I'm going for it now and I'm going to do a reread and I went for my favourite one which is Death on the Nile um, which is number 18 I believe in the Poirot series. This is very nostalgic for me because um, growing up, I remember watching this um, on Christmas Day, um, Christmas Day TV with Peter Ustinov. I'll put a picture of him as Hercule Poirot um, and absolutely love this. So it brings back really lovely memories. Um, I'm sure most of you know the story, but it's um, about Jackie, who is in love with Simon Doyle. And one day, this is in England, she introduces her boyfriend, Simon, to her friend, Lynette Ridgway. Well, lo and behold, Lynette and Simon then fall in love. They then get married. So Jackie is completely jilted. They are then on, I think it's their honeymoon, um, in Egypt on this boat on, on the Nile. And, um, but then Jackie appears and everywhere these this marriage couple seem to go, Jackie keeps popping up like a bad penny. Um, Lynette also seems to have other issues going on regarding her finances and there are other, as there always are in Poirot, lots of like financial is issues and assets and things. And, um, and then we find that she, um, there is a murder and actually on the boat there is not one but multiple murders. So yeah, absolutely love this again, even though I know the story inside out and I know who the murderer is, um, I absolutely loved it. So just to round up October, this second half of October, I'm so pleased. So I had um, four five stars and two four stars. So yay, I'm really, really happy with that. Um, Thank you so much for watching. Please do let me know. How did Victober go for you? Um, what was your best read um, of October? Was it a Victorian book or was it something completely different? Was it a thriller, a spooky book or something utterly different? Um, I would love to know. Please do comment down below. I'd love to connect with you um, and find out what you've been reading and any recommendations. Um, that would be great. For, I would be really grateful for that too. Um, please take care and I will see you for another video very soon. Bye!